Hey, welcome back everyone. Um, I wanted to give you guys a quick update on the progress of the Streamliner development. Um, I've addressed some of the issues from the first rounds of testing and of course found some new issues and uh, went ahead and began testing and tuning um, the electronic stabilization. Uh, but first off, I wanted to start with the actual physical changes that have happened to the car. Um, I've redesigned and reprinted the uh, rear wheel out of glass reinforced nylon which allowed me to remove close to 20 grams of unsprung weight versus the original wheel, um, which is very significant. And it also made the wheel overall more um, flexible. I also increased, of course, the sidewall of the tire to uh, increase compliance uh, for that large unsprung mass. And that made a, a significant difference when launching the car. Um, additionally, I also printed out some shims so I could perfectly center uh, the wheel uh, with the center line of the body, I found it was about a millimeter off, which probably shouldn't have affected too much, but you know, I wanted to get a, get it perfect. As I mentioned in the last video, this is a sensorless uh, brushless motor. So there is a minimum RPM that the motor will spin. And I found some tire slip actually makes the car easier to launch. In fact, I found some dirty concrete and it was much easier to launch off of that. I also went ahead and improved the springs. Um, initially, they were just a simple uh, leaf spring design in the front uh, like this. And I changed that uh, after reading about some compliant mechanisms to this kind of squiggly design. And the reason for that is it more evenly distributes the stresses. And I'm actually able to print the front spring out of PLA and get a really nice spring rate out of it. And it doesn't have any of the normal uh, brittleness issues that uh, you would expect with PLA, which is actually pretty cool. And it also makes the uh, spring rate um, somewhat more progressive. Um, so that also will help uh, making it soft for the first bit of tri uh, travel and then slowly getting stiffer. So I was also still having the car more, roll over more to the left than to the right, which uh, bothered me. Um, I did notice that the original front wheels could catch on the front suspension under load. Um, so I went ahead and actually redesigned the front wheel, uh, took a couple of grams off of it, as well as actually narrowing it up and widening the track a little bit. So there's actually more space um, between the wheel and the front suspension. And the wheel actually is stiffer than the initial uh, design as well. I am still concerned that the uh, rolling over behavior is due to the lack of front independent suspension. And uh, when a wheel is lifted in the front, I think that that's causing oscillations over the entire length of the car, um, which lead to the rollover. I possibly may need to add an extra pivot point um, for the front suspension that actually decouples the roll action of the front suspension from the main body. I'm also tempted to test out a, a rounded rear tire versus just a flat square rear tire and see how the car responds. Um, but let me know what you all think. Um, there's not a lot of information out there about, um, you know, three wheel cars and how to make them, you know, stable, uh, particularly in this configuration with having two front and one rear. Um, you know, if this was like in a motorcycle type configuration that once you get it up to speed, it would sort of self stabilize. So, oh, and the last change I did to the car was, uh, I killed a servo in a front end crash. So we've gone ahead and added a nice uh, TPU bumper to the front uh, servo here so that uh, we can hopefully prevent that one from being destroyed in any uh, further accidents. I've also gone ahead and 3D printed um, shock absorbers. As I was getting further into my testing, I was starting to really see the oscillations uh, moving into the body. And so I know that I have to have these shock absorbers to be able to start getting this more stable, particularly uh, when going over bumps. Um, I've started testing more on sidewalks, which I've actually found to be uh, much flatter and easier to drive on, um, despite the large expansion joints every uh, few feet. So on to the electronics. As you saw from the uh, last video, the car could barely go 50 feet without rolling over, which made testing or gathering any kind of data 
almost impossible. So my goal before I try any more high speed testing is to go ahead and add and tune an electronic stabilization system for the car. I'm actually at a good first stopping point for, with the electronics, hence why I wanted to share this all with you because I think for 99% of the people out there looking to build their own uh, Arduino based gyro stabilization, this is kind of what you're looking for. And my phase two electronics, which I'll cover a little bit later, are gonna take this kind of to the extreme uh, from a data acquisition and control standpoint. So phase one electronics are pretty straightforward. What we have here is just, uh, it's called an Adafruit Cutie Pie, which is just a uh, SAMD 21 processor running at uh, 48 megahertz, an ARM Cortex M0. Definitely overkill for this, but uh, I wanted to find a really small uh, microcontroller so that I could stuff it inside this body uh, easily. And essentially what's happening is all the signals from the receiver here are being sent to the cutie pie and the cutie pie is sending out those signals after to remap them based on the gyro stabilization out to the uh, electronic speed controller here and the servo uh, up front here. And the way I'm actually tracking all this is with an accelerometer that's right here inside the car. Uh, it's an MPU 6050. They're a couple bucks a piece. So really you're talking seven or eight dollars worth of electronics I have here uh, to provide the full electronic stabilization for the car. So once all the electronics were wired together, creating the actual software to read the gyro and the signals from the RC receiver was very straightforward. I could literally go on the internet and find uh, 20 examples of each. Um, so I was able to pull that raw data together and with that, start to create my controller for stabilizing the car. Um, I'm gonna say my first attempt at the controller uh, was a massive failure. Uh, I tried to use the roll angle of the car because in my mind's eye, that's what I was trying to prevent was the car rolling over. So I had a simple proportional controller where I had a, a constant multiplied by the roll angle of the car and I subtracted that from the steering uh, servo input and from the throttle input effectively counter steering uh, when the car began to roll and actually cutting the throttle. Uh, this approach was terrible and I fought with it way too long. Uh, the first issue was that the car uh, had to be on flat level ground when plugging it in so that the offset for the angle would be correct for the roll angle. Um, then if the road tilted at all, the car would steer with the tilt in the road. I did silly things like create an EMA filter for the angle that slowly moved the offset for the roll angle, blah, blah, blah. It was, it was bad. Also, it didn't work because by the time the roll angle had changed, um, the steering didn't have enough control authority to save the car. So that learning experience behind me, I did some more research and found a bunch of examples of controllers on the internet for RC uh, Arduino-based drifting control and stabilization. Um, they gave me some great ideas, but I wasn't always getting the results I was expecting from them. Um, my main problem was that the uh, method that they were using to pull the data from the MPU 6050 accelerometer and uh, gyro was actually giving me a static uh, yaw angle. Instead, what I really need was the yaw rate, which is sort of the degree, which is the degrees per second that the car was actually yawing. But I decided to just calculate the yaw rate from the yaw angle itself. Uh, to do this, I make a measurement of the current yaw angle, wait some period of time, say five to 10 milliseconds, and then check the yaw angle again, uh, and then divide the change in the angle by the change in time. So now that I had a yaw rate, I once again return to a simple proportional controller, essentially multiplying the error, which is any yaw rate above zero by my constant, and then subtracting that from the steering input and the throttle input. So it's about this time that I realized that I needed actual data to continue to tune this, and that led me to my Electronics 2.0. Initially, the plan was to use this uh, single Cutie Pie uh, for controlling the GPS, MPU, SD card, and OLED screen, and interfacing with the RC receiver. Sadly, I simply just ran out of pins uh, to do this because I wasn't able to find sensors that used all the same buses. So I could add another cutie pie. 
Uh, but instead, I had a uh, trusty $8 ESP32 left over from my F1 gearbox project. And I came up with the idea to go ahead and simplify this and actually potentially save some weight and space. Um, so now the OLED screen is out and will be replaced by a web interface that's actually hosted on the ESP32 so that I can review you know, top speeds and, and GPS data and other data on my phone without having to actually open up the car every time because that's kind of a pain since it all screws together. Also, the extra I.O. will allow me to use a six channel airplane style receiver, um, which has dual antennas, which is going to increase my radio range as well as allow allowing me to have a lot more uh, channels and inputs so that I can actually tune things like the stability control and the track contraction control um, with the variable knobs on the transmitter and use a switch to actually enable and disable the current hogging uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth radios on the ESP32. Um, and then also the additional channels allow me to, you know, do things like, you know, someday pop a parachute. Another advantage to all this is I can in the future integrate all this into one tiny PCB that will be essentially the ultimate uh, speed run setup with uh, GPS, Wi-Fi, you know, accelerometers and full mapping and control of the receiver inputs and outputs. So as I said, 99% of the people out there will most likely be interested in this phase one setup uh, that is less than $10 and allows a tiny standalone controller like a Cutie Pie or an Arduino Nano to provide gyro stability for their two to three channel RC car. Uh, I'll go ahead and publish the code and everything for phase one uh, to my GitHub. You know, obviously with no warranty, um, you'll need to do your own tuning or even add in a third channel to allow for a transmitter to actually control the gain of the tuning. For me, the next steps are to go ahead and complete the actual phase 2.0 electronics, um, get the dampers installed, uh, then hopefully I will have enough data to get this thing to go more than 50 feet at a time and then I'll actually be able to start trying to go fast. I mean, fingers crossed. So that wraps it up for this video. I uh, hopefully we'll have a couple other projects kicking off here soon as well. Thanks for watching and stay safe out there.